Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna we're gonna start the town bike mini, and these are the parts that I ordered. I'm missing a few parts, like I don't have the spokes because uh, I need to measure spoke length. Uh, so let's take a quick look. This is a shifter. Um, it's for an integrated gear hub, which I have here somewhere. This is my integrated gear hub. So I'm gonna throw that back in here with the shifter. I had to buy these separately, unfortunately. That was a three-speed gear hub. Uh, let's see, we've got some BRM375 disc brakes cabled. Uh, more disc brake, brake levers, uh, front hub, stem, uh, disc brake, uh, rear, I forget what this is called, uh, rotor adapter for the rear. Um, I'll open this up, this is pretty cool, these are the Paragon Machine Works sliding dropouts. Disc brakes, the discs. Um, let's see, these are the cranks. Let me get all this out of the way. C tube. These cranks, I, I've been buying these for a while. They just work, and they're relatively cheap. So these are just the Sugino. These are actually kind of hard to find these days. Uh, so 46 tooth, single speed. Let me show you guys the uh, Paragon Machine Works dropouts. It didn't come packaged this way, I just threw it in a bag so I didn't lose the parts. Uh, this is the hardware. These are the uh, dropouts. Actually, these are the sliding dropouts. And these are the, um, the I don't know, the the sliding, I forget what they call them on the website. So I had to get this one with the hanger because the 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 one without the hanger um, was out of stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this. It, they were the same price and I'm going to cut off my hanger. These are actually aluminum, which I was surprised to find out, which is nice. I mean, they're they're really beefy and they look super strong. And there's no reason why these would need to be steel because I don't need to weld anything to these. And this is the other slider. And it has the disc mount, flat disc mount right here. Okay, um, I've got my tubes here. And one thing I like to do is check sizes of things and make sure I got the right parts. So this is my headset. Don't think I've worked with this size before. And actually, I'm not sure if I even have a, um, a head tube reamer that's the correct size. Maybe I won't need one. We'll see. This is my stem. Let's do a quick sanity check here. Yep, that's the right size. I, I buy this stuff so long ago, I don't even remember what size they are anymore. It's good to know it fits. And then here, I've ordered my tube. So this is a 68 millimeter bottom bracket. Uh, this looks like a, a seat tube. Yes, it is. And uh, this is another seat tube. So one of these is the wrong C-tube, and I realized it like the next day, and then ordered the correct C-tube. Um, and I didn't feel like canceling the order and going through all that trouble. Um, I think I'll just, I'll use the other one for some, some other project. Uh, but the difference between these is one of them is externally butted. I can actually see it's this one. And this one is uh, internally butted. Uh, I think on just one side, 
So the C-tube end actually is not, it's not made to jam a C-tube in there directly. Um, it's probably meant for a collar or to be uh, lugged or something like that. All right, so I'll put that one away. Uh, the other tube here is this is my head tube. So this is the one we're going to be working on today. Today we're going to cut the head tube and uh, face uh, the cut side. Let's get this thing out of here. Uh, this is just a straight head tube, no budding, nothing. And we're going to just do a quick, just a quick size test here. Yep, that looks like the right size. I hope. It's fairly tight fit. Let me get the camera up closer. You can see here it's a fairly tight fit. It looks the right size. Um, pretty sure it is. It might be a little bit tighter because these are meant to be reamed inside here uh, to get you the final fit. And of course uh, these will distort as you're welding them. This is fairly thick. Wow. Looks like a little more than a... It looks like it's over a mil. I know that. So yeah, should be all right. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna mark this tube and um, let's see. I don't have a way to, well, this isn't the right size. It's the Paragon Machine Works tube block, but it's kind of the right size. It's close, pretty close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to help me get a, a, a straight line around this tube. So let's measure this. This is a pretty long head tube. I, probably can get like three three head tubes out of, out of this. That's the nice thing about a straight head tube. So we're gonna do a 148 millimeters long. Just gonna mark that. One forty eight just make double sure. Yep. I'm going to use this to just kind of make sure get a sort of straight line here around. It's just kind of a, a guide because I will be using the bandsaw to cut this. I found this in my toolbox. This is uh, used to cut tubes and it gets Helps you get a nice straight line, um, but I'm going to use it on this bandsaw. The problem is, is I've got these little tab things to that are going to like get in the way when I'm trying to cut this. So I'm going to cut these little tabs off because I never use this thing, and uh, it'll be handy on this bandsaw. Here it is, all nice and cut, and uh, looks like I can still get this in a vise if I need to. So whenever I cut the tubes, I use uh, I swap out the blade for a sharp blade, and I don't use this for all the other junky stuff I'm cutting. These blades are pricey, so I try to use just this nice one for bike tubes. So that I don't forget, I'm going to put this little thing on here. And now I know to swap it out if I'm going to cut some junky stuff. Okay, so that came out pretty well. Um, I've got about a millimeter of extra space. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn this down on the lathe. Um, it's probably straight enough if you don't have a lathe. Yeah, probably. But I'm going to do it anyway just to make sure. So I was, uh, I was curious um, about the cutter. So this is a, a reamer, and um, it's too big. It's, uh, this should go inside here. So I'm going to need to buy one of these that is the correct size for this tube. Bummer. 
Okay, I'm all set up on the mini lathe. I've got my tube, the head tube on a steady rest. I really hate using these things because um, these bearings, you don't want to go too tight and you don't want to go loose. Um, but no matter what, it ends up kind of marring up the tube a little bit. I think I've got it at just the right um, tightness. Uh, normally you'd have a bigger lathe and you'd stick this tube right through the bore of the lathe. But unfortunately, um, I think this is so big, it's like most, most bench lathes will not have a bore this large. I could be wrong about that. Okay, let's, let's do this. Okay, uh, I don't like the sound it's making, so I'm going to, um, let's see, I can't lock it down, unfortunately, because I've got my lead screw geared up. Oh, I wish I had a carriage lock. Okay, uh, just, I guess I'm just going to keep doing it this way. I'm going to slow it down a little. This is not the most powerful lathe in the world, so if you go too slow, it's gonna, it'll get hung up. I think that's good. Uh, I'm gonna flip this around and do the other side. So before I flip it, I wanna show you what I was talking about, the marring. Um, it's so minor, it's super minor. I don't like it, but unfortunately, there's no other way I can do this uh, in my shop. So what I'll need to do is just throw this on a sander and that this will come off pretty quickly and not be visible. Um, in most cases, you would paint this, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to leave this frame raw and put a c clear coat over it um, per my wife's instructions. She just wants a, uh, she wants a raw frame. So um, yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, uh, I should have cleaned out this other side first. You okay? All right, this is all it needed. Uh, this other side was really close to faced, so had a really good face on it. Yep, that's really, I can't even feel it. You can see it, but I can't feel it. So, um, yeah. So the trick to these mini lathes is you gotta go really slow with steel. Like, uh, you can't look up speeds and feet you can look up speeds and feeds online and all that sort of stuff, and I'll tell you, none of that applies to mini lathes. They just a completely different thing. 
So you just have to go by sight, sound, and feel. Uh, in this case, I just slowed it down to the point where it stopped the chattering, and I went really slow. And um, that's that'll get you where you need to be. Okay, so here's the face tube. I came in at 149, that's great. Uh, we wanted this to be a final length of 148, so it's, it's one millimeter over. And uh, if it stayed that way, that's fine, but also it does give us a little space on the, on the ends for uh, facing after the bike is completely welded, uh, reaming and facing. Okay. Okay, here's my tubes. I'm going to go ahead and measure all of these just to make sure I'm dealing with the right diameters. Also, because I don't always trust uh, manufacturer's specs, so I need some calipers. For you people in the US, um, this is a 3 quarter inch and this is 5 eighths. The 5 eighths is for the seat stays and the 3 quarter inch is for the chain stays. All of these three tubes here are 0.035 mil, uh, sorry, 0.035 inch, which is about one millimeter wall thickness. So first we're gonna measure this head tube and I'm gonna measure in millimeters. So that's 32.36, bottom bracket shell. And that's 38.04. So I've got 38 here. That's fine, 38. Uh, next, we will do the, the seat tube here. So this is a externally budded seat tube. And um, you can see this end here, it's got a little mark on it, a little dab of, of, what is that? Wow, that's, uh, it's like a hole. <laughs> Weird. All right. Um, well, this is, I think they do that so that you don't use, this is obviously not the seat, uh, the seat post end, sorry. So this is obviously not the seat post end. It's got a little, it's literally got a, like a hole in it. And that kind of tells you like, you're not gonna get anything in here. This is the end you cut. So I'm gonna measure that. 28.63, and this is the butted end. Yep, 29.69. 28.63 on this end. So the 29.69, this is what we will enter into BikeCAD because this is where the tubes uh, meet up. They'll meet up right about here, which is the thicker butted end. Um, just so I don't, no, I guess I'm not gonna forget. You know what? I'm gonna mark this because I don't trust myself. No, no cut. 31, uh, what are we looking at here? Eh, it's roughly 31.8. 31.8, I have 32 here, that's basically correct, 32. I'm gonna leave that at 32. And the top is also 32. 15.9, ah. yeah, that's pretty close actually. I've made enough mistakes where I, I, I check so many times. Uh, okay, 19.09, we're gonna call that 19 millimeters. Uh, and that's correct, that's listed properly on here for the chain stays. All right, I think I've got all my measurements set up. Now I need to take this into BiCAD and punch these in. For the most part, this won't change much, uh, but some measurements do change. Like the ones that are important are the head tube and the C-tube thickness because that will determine where you cut and how long the down tube, uh, top tube, chain stay and seat stays, that'll determine those lengths.
Okay, I've got this all taped up and the uh, nice thing about BiCAD is you can export a PDF and then you can bring the PDF into Reader, um, Adobe Reader or Acrobat Reader and um, it'll print it out. You, you tell it to print in poster as a poster format and it basically slices it up and it'll print out each thing. What I did as an extra step is I brought this into Photoshop and then cropped it a little so that I didn't have to print out in so many pages of paper and then I brought it into Reader. So one really nice thing about BiCAD is it had the Paragon Machine Works dropouts. You could preload them in there and as you can see it fits pretty, I mean it's exact for the most part. Um, even has this guy here. So this is the the other side. Um, yeah, so fits on there like perfectly. So that'll come in really handy. It already adjusted my seat stays and chain stays. Uh, by the way, I always will print one of these before cutting tubes. And the reason is when you cut the tube, you want to make sure you leave extra space. And I mean, you can do it in your head. You can kind of use a ruler, but I like to like look at the drawing and measure out the extra length I need and then I know for sure um, nothing's worse than cutting a tube too short. Alright, I uh, noticed something about this tube. I have this already cut tube from before. It's like a, a remnant of a longer tube. And um, so I measured out my my top here at 540. I left uh, quite a bit of extra space. Um, but then when I look at what's left here, I can almost get the down tube out of this tube. So I'm gonna do something daring and I'm gonna like try to squeeze both of these tubes into this one piece because I'm cheap and this stuff's expensive. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna look at the drawing. Yet another good reason to have a drawing. And I am gonna skimp on this this cut and hopefully not regret it later. I don't even know where this is. I'm gonna use the drawing, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark it, um, right here. I'm gonna X this guy out. All right. And here I am on the down tube, and oh my gosh, this is so close. So close. I don't even know if I should dare. What's the worst that could happen, right? I guess I could mess up one side, in which case it's kind of useless anyway, right? All right, guys, here is the tube set all cut. There's the C tube. Uh, let's see, we get the down tube, the possibly too short down tube. I think it'll be fine. And there's the top tube, top tube. It all roll off the table. Okay. And seat stays chain stays. It's really weird when you look at the drawing. Um, uh, these things look much shorter than when it's on a computer and whenever I print these things out the first thing I think is this looks too small but it's actually not. It's a small bike to begin with. And uh, okay here's my uh, bottom bracket and my head tube. So uh, yeah we've got all our tubes ready. Um, these are going to need to be, the chain stays are going to need to be bent and possibly the seat stays. Uh, that's work I need to do in BiCAD. I never used BiCAD past this point, but in this case, I am going to use BiCAD because BiCAD has options uh, to let you bend these in as many places as you need. You enter in the numbers and then you can check all your clearances and whatnot. So I'm going to go that route. I'm going to bend these in BiCAD, check my clearances, 
and also um, enter in like my wheel size, the, how the, uh, the tube, the tire diameter, um, and I'll make sure that my chain ring isn't hitting the chain stay and the cranks and all that sort of stuff. These are so short, I have to be very careful there uh, because the cranks are very likely going to hit these. Um, what else? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I could go ahead and like cut all this stuff, but I just want to be safe and plan out the back end of the bike before I do anything else. So that's going to take some computer work. Uh, I will do that and show you guys the results in the next video. I have to stop here for now because, um, yeah, there's some design and paperwork I need to do next. Thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next one.